mean, it's just bloody stunning. Why won't anybody answer the phone? Look at that. Life is uncertain. And that uncertainty makes life thrilling and frightening. If everything in life was guaranteed, there would be nothing to strive for, nowhere to go. If you knew every time you started a race that you would cross the finish line or achieve your time goal, where's the adventure, where's the challenge in that? Surely we have to experience failure before we can truly appreciate our successes. So we are in the queue for the uh, Glencoe Skyline and Ben Nevis Ultra. There are two queues behind me, uh, one for Glencoe and one for Ben Nevis. Under no circumstances should anybody join the Glencoe queue. It is certain death. So we're going for Ben Nevis, which is just certain DNF. What would you rather have? Having failed to complete the Ben Nevis Ultra on my two previous visits, I was back in Kinlochleven for a third attempt at one of Britain's toughest 50k races. Let me know in the comments which you think is the toughest. This is actually far more technical than anything we're going to do in the race. This is Grey Mare's waterfall behind me. To get to it you have to clamber along these chain ropes. We've been and we're just coming back. It's 7.30 in the morning and these are the Glencoe Skyline runners off on their journey. Have a good day, guys. The Ben Nevis Ultra may be tough, but on its inception, the 52-kilometre Glencoe Skyline was dubbed the death race by some sections of the media. Hi, everybody. Uh, so they're going on the nice, scary race and uh, we're, going on the, uh, we're going on the baby race. All the races at the Skyline Scotland weekend start outside the Ice Factor, the ice climbing centre and cafe in Kinlochleven. I arrived at Kitchek wearing my Zwift singlet, Salomon Sense Pro 10 litre race vest and my new Innovate mud claws. There were only five minutes to go before the first wave start. Good morning, welcome to Film My Run. We're a bit late. Didn't get into the starting pen. I was the last one in the starting pen. This is the Ben Nevis Ultra. This is our third time of trying this. We are going to finish this time. We are confident, we are happy. I've got Clive here to help me along. I've got Marcus here to help me along. We are going to get this finished this year. Good luck, guys. Two, one, off you go. Right, let's do this thing. Here we go. Good luck, guys. Enjoy it. Enjoy yourselves. We're off. <laughs> Going the wrong way already. Good start. <laughs> got a YouTube channel, haven't you? Yes, buddy. Uh, I just watched your last two videos. Coming. Oh, that's inspired you then, hasn't it? <laughs> You're gonna, this one. We're going to get this done today. <laughs> After a kilometre through the town, we were on our way up. The Ben Nevis Ultra encompasses around 4,000 metres of elevation gain as it traverses over loose rock, boulders, wet grass, mud, deep bogs and fire track. If you're looking for a sky running adventure with a bit more bite, this is undoubtedly it. Women see men coming. <laughs> Now I have no problem with the terrain, I love it. The issue historically for me has been covering that ground at a pace fast enough to beat the cutoffs, which for a mid-pack runner like me are aggressive. We are 10 kilometers in to the Ben Nevis Ultra, one hour, 48 minutes. This is what we're climbing over now. It's cool, but it's not freezing cold. It's cloudy, but it's not raining. Everything is good. Ben Nevis is over there in the clouds. We're gonna go along here and down in a minute, and then along the river. These early miles held no surprises. I was moving well and feeling good. About nine miles in, two hours, 18 minutes. So we're now running through the valley. It's very boggy on the foot, and you can see 
the level at which I went down into the water at one point. And we've still got to keep our eyes on very technical rocky terrain underfoot, as well as bog. It's easy to believe you're not good enough, not fast enough, not strong enough. But more often than not, it's a learning process and we can be good enough when we tap into our full potential. Rather than admit defeat after my two DNFs, I'd convinced myself I had more to give. I was sure I could do better and I wanted to prove it to myself. Right, we're about 12 miles in, nearly 19 kilometres. So that's the valley we've just come through. That is Ben Nevis up there. That is Kenmore Deg up there. And we are following the red flags up the hill. It's tough going. But the weather is almost perfect. It's like, it's not hot but it's, it's definitely not cold, so it's just right. Doubt will always find a way to creep in, and as I started the ascent to Cairnmore Deg, I was reminded of my fear of heights and how I sometimes struggle on exposed sections of rock. I had to have a bit of a chat with myself. I told myself to carry on doing the small jobs all day. Following the red flags. One foot in front of the other to the next flag. So this is the ridge up to Kenmore Deg. It's not too bad at all. And usually there's a beautiful, well not usually, but there is a beautiful view behind us there. Sometimes I think it's better to be in the clouds so you have no idea how far you could fall. Okay, top of the CMD Arete. Well, no, top of the CMD. And now we've got the CMD Arete, which you can't see because it's just all shrouded in cloud. But believe me, it looks awesome. And the top of Ben Nevis is uh, over there. And we've got two and a half hours to get up and over Ben Nevis and down the other side for the checkpoint. So this is CMD Arete. It's basically just a boulder field, a knife edge boulder field. <laughs> and you just have to be careful. <laughs> Come on, buddy, you go through. Thank you, <laughs> Be rest. No. Thank you very much, man. That's All right. Go for it. Okay, we've made it across the Arete. So now we just need to climb up to the summit of Ben Nevis. And then we've got a couple of hours to get down to uh, Glen Nevis and the checkpoint at the bottom of the mountain. Okay, so we've made it to the summit of Ben Nevis. This is my third summit of Ben Nevis. I really shouldn't be messing around, I should be getting down to the bottom. We've got an hour and a half, so we should be okay. No views, unfortunately, today on the top of Ben Nevis. Just the old weather station, and that's it. The summit of Ben Nevis is probably a good place to say that if you're enjoying this video or finding it useful or interesting, then please do subscribe to the channel. Click the thumbs up and share it around with your friends. It really does help us out. Okay, we're below the clouds now. We've got three miles to go, 5K, to the uh, aid station, the checkpoint at the bottom of the hill. We've got 54, 53 minutes to do it in. And the lake that you can see down there is Halfway Lake. So when we get down to that lake, we know we're halfway down the descent. The tourist route off Ben Nevis is mostly runnable. It's not trouble free by any means, but if your quads aren't destroyed, you can make it down the hill in good time. Looking at the footage and hearing myself back, I sense a little complacency creeping in. We often balance on a tightrope between confidence and complacency, between self-doubt and self-belief. So about a kilometre and a half to the checkpoint. We've got about 25 minutes, so we're going to do it easily in time. Perhaps I always feel I'm a stronger runner than I really am. Whether it was complacency, lack of fitness or a combination of the two, I was slower on the descent than I should have been and found myself with less time than expected when I eventually arrived at the only aid station on the Ben Nevis Ultra course. Just need to get out of here quick, don't we? Right, we've made it to the checkpoint um, and uh, we've got 15 minutes, so... But we need to get out, make sure we hit the next cut-off on time this time. 
Right, that's it, we're off. Cheers, bud. So I've got sausage rolls, I've got apple, I've got crisps, and a saurine bar. That'll do me. <laughs> Made it to the checkpoint. Thank you, buddy. Three miles of flat. All right, thank you. Right, there we are, three miles of flat to the next checkpoint. Brilliant waterfall here, and I remember last year, somebody diving off there into that that was much more full of water last year somebody jumped off it that is the last cut off before the end so i can now run to the end now whether i get to the end of the run within the cut off like the finish line has a cut off of 12 hours so i've got to get there as well to get my finish time and medal so i could still fail but when I got off, cut off last year at the waterfall, that is no longer a cut off as far as I know. Nice easy path this, really easy. There's no technical stuff here now. In fact, the cut off time had been extended by 45 minutes, which was going to become particularly relevant in the final few kilometers. Who are you? Heather. Heather, hi Heather. Cheers. Bye. going through the car park where people walk to see Steel Falls, which is a very beautiful spot, which we're going to pass in a minute. Thank you. The route between the car park and Steel Falls had been slightly altered to take out a gnarly climb, making this section slightly easier. And given the removal of the river crossing checkpoint, I felt I could relax a little on the way to Steel Falls. When I arrived at the river, it was a full 20 minutes after the cut-off time here last year. Oh, that actually feels really nice. Look at that. Fabulous. I was now in uncharted territory and I wasn't entirely sure what was to come. In my head, there was only one significant climb left up to the summit of Angirinach. Officially, my third Munro of the day at 982 metres. Less than 10 k to go now, 9 hours, 20 minutes. Tough climb this one, but it is the last one. However, whilst this was the last really big ascent, there were still two smaller Munros to summit and a very technical ridge to negotiate. On tired legs, I was not moving fast, and I was still under the impression that the finish line cutoff was 12 hours, and I was losing time. Right, one more summit to go. Is that Kinloch Leaving down there? That is the finish line down there. Finish line is down there. That's Kinloch Leaving, so we've got to go up that ridge there. Just that one. And then we can go down. Oh, I'm absolutely shattered. We've got less than 8k to go to get down to that finish line and we have um, ooh, an hour and a half to do it in. I think that's going to be tight. It really is going to be tight for the finish line cut off. Top of the final climb. And there's still sunshine down in Kinloch Lever by the looks of it. And we are on our way home. 5k to go. Cheers bro. Enjoy. Thank you. That was a very gnarly climb as well. Hands and uh, knees and everything. Look at that beautiful view, that is amazing. At the top of the final Munro, I believed I had 50 minutes to do around six kilometers down the hill into Kinloch Leven. Now on any normal day, in any normal race, that would of course be perfectly achievable. But not today, not for me. I wasn't going to make it. But then, as the wet bog gave way to gravel path, a marshal informed me that the course didn't close until 8.30 p.m. Incredibly, I still had time. The light is desperately fading. I've got 3K to go, but I need to push it to get in under the cutoff. Hopefully, hopefully I can do it. I'd managed to avoid putting my head torch on and ran through Kinloch Leven to finally complete the Ben Nevis Ultra. Made it inside the cutoff, but I also wanted to get in like under 
the 12 hours. I have absolutely no idea what I was going on about here. I crossed the line in 12 hours and 28 minutes. It took me two hours to do the final eight kilometers. And if this had been last year, I would have missed the cutoff by 28 minutes. But the Ben Nevis Ultra was kind to me this year. Could I ever make it in under 12 hours? Well, I'm not sure we'll ever find out. What's your name? Rick. Bruce. Subscribe, subscribe. 12, 15, Fantastic. 28. Great to see I'm getting it done. Sunday getting it done. Here, Got it done. Well, I've had a hot chocolate. I've missed food at the Ice Factor, so I'm going to have to go to the chip shop. That was, and Clive will agree with me, absolutely horrendous. The second half that I've never done before is far and away worse than the first half. <laughs> but we're finished, we did it. And uh, Clive and me never have to come back here and do this again. That is it now, we are done. Uh, so thank you very much for watching. Uh, this has been Film My Run, yet another epic, ridiculous adventure. Take care. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.